In this video, we are plowing our way through snow-covered roads towards a mountain lake. This is our second attempt trying to get to this lake. During the trip, we had an incident which required some field repairs. We'll cover that in detail. And this winter, we've been on several snow trips, each with uniquely different snow, including powder, granulated crystals, ice, and the all too well-known Pacific Northwest cement. So in this video, I thought we'd give some tips on what not to do when you are off-road driving in these different types of snow conditions. We also meet some new friends and find a great campsite. So let's get started. Okay, the first thing I do on a trip like this is gauge my brother's level of mental vigilance. Because the first and most important thing not to do on a snow trip is let your brother trick you. Don't be fooled by that pretty face. He's clever and he's sneaky. And if I let my guard down even for a minute, he's gonna trick me into doing something. So I have to see if he's on his game or not. And I do so by making this innocent suggestion. Steve, walk out on that log. Okay. <laughs> First I'm gonna do some parkour. You're gonna do it, huh? What could go wrong? Do one of those lumberjack things where you spin the log like you're running on top of it. <laughs> I'm just kidding, of course. We have a ton of fun when we're together, even if there is a little bit of brotherly competition. Well, we like this area by the water for camp, so we left a tent set up and headed out to find some snow. Now, throughout the course of this video, I'm going to give some tips on what not to do when driving in the snow. And I should mention that in our prior snow wheeling videos, I did give tips on tire pressure, kinetic rope, and a bunch of other things related to snow driving. So in this video, I'll stick to things that we dealt with on this trip. And on this trip, we're heading up to a high mountain lake and we know we're going to need to break trail and we know we are not going to be dealing with ideal snow conditions. Now, as we finish driving over these logs, let's talk a little bit about snow. On our previous snow trips this year, we have been in all different types of snow, everything from powder to cement. Well, on this trip, the snow that we are driving on has been through regular melt and freeze cycles. So the top is frozen crust and underneath are ice crystals that are the size of rock salt and are as hard as BBs. When you drive on it, the tracks look like this and you can walk on the surface no problem. But when you step down into the tracks, it's just this loose collection of crystals the size of rock salt. This does not provide very much traction at all. So the tips that I'm going to give today are generally applicable to driving in the snow, but more specifically, I'm giving tips that are relevant to the experience that we had on this trip and really help in the snow that has been through these melt freeze cycles. And the first of these has to do with timing. So the first thing not to do is leave too late in the day. Your best chance, especially on snow that's going through these melt freeze cycles, is to go earlier in the day when the snow is still hard and easy to drive on. Your chances of getting very far are going to decrease as the day gets warmer and the snow softens up. Now here, we know we got a late start. We know that we're going to encounter wet snow. We know that we're probably gonna get stuck, but we also know we're, we're gonna get pretty close to this lake and we have a chance of making it to the lake. And these high mountain lakes are a sight to see in the winter. Okay, the next thing not to do is do not use lockers on off camber slopes. If you're on a snowy, slippery, off camber side slope like this, use an open differential if possible. Lockers will tend to walk you sideways down these off camber slopes. Now the next tip on things not to do has to do with braking trail. Don't send your heavy vehicles first. So here in my vehicle, I'm driving in the lead, but my vehicle is relatively heavy. So I'm going to pull over and we're going to send John, whose vehicle is lighter, first. If you have a vehicle in your group that is relatively light, but it has good off-road capability, you know, a lift with tires that are good for the snow and a robust four-wheel drive system, it's a good idea to send that vehicle first. It will typically do better in most snow conditions. And sending light vehicles first works especially well in snow that compresses to hard pack. In those situations, the person breaking trail creates a nice set of tracks for others to follow in. Also, when a lighter vehicle gets stuck, it tends not to get as buried and it's easier to extract. So send light vehicles first to break trail when you can. 
So here you can see we're starting to get into the deeper snow and things are starting to get challenging. And this brings us to our next tip, which has to do with momentum. There's a natural tendency to equate momentum with speed. And the tip is, don't do that. Momentum as an off-road application is much more than just speed. I know we often hear about using momentum in snow, mud, and sand, and that it can be good to do that, and that's true, but momentum can either be your best friend or your worst enemy. So let's talk this through a little bit. When we're talking about momentum in an off-road setting, it's not just thoughtless speed. There's more to it than that. Momentum in an off-road application is the art of matching your speed to the terrain. And there's another component to it as well. You want to maintain a constant steady speed as much as possible. And that's because sudden braking or sudden throttle inputs can lead to a loss of traction and a loss of control, which in turn leads to a loss of momentum. And just to be clear, you can lose momentum, yes, by backing off the throttle, but you can also lose momentum by stomping on the throttle because you'll get too much wheel spin and that can be just as bad. Sudden acceleration is probably where most new off-roaders go wrong because you can just end up spinning your tires and churning up deep holes. So putting this all together, one of the most important factors with momentum is getting the approach speed right so that major adjustments are not needed as you go through the obstacles. So now let's talk about momentum in snow. Here's some suggestions. If the snow is soft and not too deep and there's a firm bottom, steady momentum is a good approach. On the other hand, if the snow is fluffy and there's no bottom in sight, you may want to take a different approach depending on whether or not the snow is packing firm at all. As you can see in the video here, we're late in the day, the snow is soft, and we're struggling, breaking trail, getting stuck, extracting, and slowly making a little bit of progress forward. At this point, it's pretty much a certainty that we're not going to see the lake, and we're only continuing out of pure stubbornness and just a desire to see how close we can actually get. But the reality is we're now late in the day, the snow is pretty much slush, and even using a good momentum game will only get us a little bit further because we end up buried to our axles in snow that doesn't provide any traction. We probably should have turned around about an hour ago, but one of the things that helped us get this far was just getting out of the vehicles and looking at the road in front of us and choosing a line that either had shallower snow or snow that had been in the shade so it was a little bit harder and offered a little more traction. So we're gonna do this a couple more times just out of pure stubbornness, as I said, and just for our own entertainment. and. As we're doing it, I can talk a little bit about the next tip, which is reading the terrain. Now, experienced drivers are gonna know that everything I've said about momentum is situational. And by that, I mean that the terrain and the conditions presented will dictate certain outcomes, and good drivers have learned through experience how to read the terrain, and they know by the seat of their pants when to make the right adjustments. In off-roading, this is what separates the experts from the beginners. And it's hands down one of the most important skill sets to learn. And it only comes from experience. And that's, this means getting out of the vehicle and assessing the obstacle or the train ahead of you. And that brings us back to the basics, which is practice makes perfect. Now, I forgot to introduce these two guys and their dog. We met them on the trail. They were as equally stubborn as us, but this would be our final attempt right here. At this point, we all said, well, it was a valiant effort, and we decided uh, to head home, or at least head down the mountain. But to do that, we're going to need to dig out a little bit and get everybody extracted and turned around on this trail. And this is my patented self-recovery technique. All you got to do is put a little muscle and, and, uh, and sweat equity into it, and you just pull your vehicles along. Now here you'll see the Gear America soft shackle and kinetic rope and we are doing a Gear America giveaway that was announced in our last video and you can refer back to that if you want to throw your hat in and see if you can win two Gear America soft shackles and one recovery ring. Well all right we got everyone extracted and turned around and headed down the mountain and as I mentioned early in the video we did have one accident on an icy road and I want to talk about that now. We were headed back down to the campsite that you saw earlier in the video on these icy roads and John was in front of me and 
without warning his vehicle was suddenly sideways and then instantly off the road and he hit this tree. Other than some bruises, John was okay, but the vehicle was damaged both on the hood and grill and the bull bar was bent. And here's a tree that he hit, had a nice dent in it. Looking back on the icy road, you can see the tracks right there where he came off and that's the tree he hit. The road really was slick and it's a good reminder to always drive safe as you can. Here's the dent in the hood and the crack and you'll, you'll see that the metal bumper is actually bent but what's interesting is the fair lead is, is, is perfectly straight even though the metal bumper itself is bent in. Fortunately the off-road light did not crack. And here's the man himself, not too worse for wear, and we're all glad it didn't have a worse outcome. We got back to camp that night and John assessed the damage and did some field repairs so that the hood would close correctly, and we were at it again the next day. We then enjoyed a nice fire, and that's it guys. It's all good fun. Thanks for watching.